So we started by solving systems of linear equations using direct methods such as the Gaussian elimination, LU decomposition, and so on and so forth. Now in this particular lesson, what we are going to do is to solve systems of linear equations using what we call the iteration methods. And the first of them we are going to discuss today is the Jacobi iteration method. Now we need to understand that the basic idea behind any iteration method is such that instead of solving the system directly in order to obtain the exact solution, what we do is to assume an initial guess and then we do a number of iterations in order to obtain or attain the exact solution. Now considering this 3 by 3 system of equations, linear equations, to solve this system using Jacobi iteration method, there are at least two assumptions that we need to make. Now, the first is that the system should have a unique solution. And then the second is that the coefficient matrix, which is generated from this 3 by 3 system of linear equations, should have a non-zero diagonal element. That is, the elements A11, A22, and then A33 should all be non-zero. And then most preferably, we want A to be a diagonally dominant matrix. So what then is a diagonally dominant matrix? Now, the matrix A is said to be diagonally dominant if for every row, the absolute value of the diagonal element is greater than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of the remaining elements in the row. So A is diagonally dominant if the absolute value of A11 is greater than or equal to the absolute value of A12 plus absolute value of A13 and the absolute value of A22 is greater than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of A21 and then A23 and then same applies to the third one if the absolute value of A33 is greater than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of A31 and A32. Now, the reason why a diagonally dominant matrix or system is preferred is that it gives a sufficient or it serves as a sufficient condition for the convergence of the approximation to the exact solution. It serves as a sufficient condition, not a necessary condition. Now, what this primarily means is that if A is a diagonally dominant matrix, then it is most likely to converge to the exact solution. However, if A is not diagonally dominant, it does not necessarily mean that A will not converge. It may converge or it may not converge. However, even if it will converge, it may do it more or very slowly. It may converge very slowly. So that is why A is most likely preferred to be a diagonally dominant matrix so that at least it gives a level of assurance that the system or the approximation may or most likely converge to the exact solution. Now, considering this same 3 by 3 system of equations, in order for us to solve this system using the Jacobi iteration, we need to first of all make x1, x2, x3 the subject from each of the three equations, that is equation 1, equation 2, equation 3 respectively. Now, you realize that we have two sets of values or two sets of x values. On the right hand side, we have xi of k minus 1 values, and then on the left hand side, we have xi of k values. Now, the xi of k minus 1 values are the values that we put into these three equations in order to obtain the new set of xi of k values. So, on the right hand side, we put in xi of k minus 1, which is the previous value or the initial value to obtain xi of k, which is the new value. Now also notice that before you start the iteration process, you'll be given an initial guess, which is in this form x of 0. Now this initial guess is what we are going to put first into equation 1, 2, 3 to obtain the new set of x values. Now whenever you put in the initial guess, to obtain the new set of values, then you've performed one iteration. Now, if you put the new values again into the system to obtain another new set of values, then you do the second iteration and then so on and so forth. So you'll be given an initial guess for each problem that you have. And in a case where you are not given any initial guess, then you assume X of zero 
to be equal to zero so you have x1 x2 x3 of zero to be equal to zero 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 that is the assumption that you make when there is no initial guess in the problem so basically this is how to find or this is the formula to find a new set of values when you have the previous or the initial value now of course we can't do the iteration over and over and over it will get to a point in time we need to stop the iteration so how then do we stop the iteration we stop the iteration one when we obtain the exact solution secondly or when we have exceeded the number of iterations specified in the question or thirdly when the value obtained from any of the two expressions depending on the one you are using either one or two that is if the value obtained from each of the expressions that you are using for each xi is less than epsilon where epsilon is the error tolerance now this error tolerance will be given in the problem so whenever you have the expression given by either one or two for each xi is less than the error tolerance then we need to stop the iteration so basically this is a brief description or overview of jacobi iteration method we have a problem we are going to solve the problem together so that we clearly understand how this iteration method works so let's do that together so in the first problem we are going to solve the system of linear equations using jacobi iteration method and we are asked to perform only two iterations so how do we solve this problem first of all we need to understand that here we are not giving any initial guess so we assume x1 of 0 x2 of 0 x3 of 0 all to be equal to 0 so that is the initial guess that we we make we make the guess or the assumption that x of 0 which is equal to x1 of 0 x2 of 0 x3 of 0 are all equal to 0 and this is the initial guess now secondly we need to verify to see if the coefficient matrix generated from this system of equations is a diagonally dominant matrix so here we can have the coefficient matrix out of this and that is having components 8 5 2 2 10 negative 2 1 3 6 now we said that this matrix a is going to be diagonally dominant if and only if the absolute value of the diagonal element is greater than or equal to the sum of the absolute values of the remaining elements in each row so here let's try to investigate that so we have absolute value of 8 to be 8 and that is greater than or equal to absolute value of 5 plus absolute value of 2 which is 7 again we have absolute value of 10 to be 10 which is greater than or equal to absolute value of 2 plus absolute value of negative 2 absolute value of negative 2 is also 2 so 2 plus 2 is 4 and then lastly we have absolute value of 6 which is 6 to be greater than or equal to absolute value of 1 plus absolute value of 3 which is 4 now since 8 is greater than or equal to 7 10 is greater than or equal to 4 and then 6 is also greater than or equal to 4 it follows that the matrix a which is the coefficient matrix from this 3 by 3 system of equations is a diagonally dominant matrix now if this is diagonally dominant what it indicates to us is basically that it is most likely to converge or it gives us a level of assurance that the approximation is most likely to converge to the exact solution so notice that this is the initial guess that we made this is the initial guess that we made initial guess so in order to perform the iteration what we need to do is to make x1 x2 x3 the subject from equations 1 2 and 3 respectively so for equation 1 we are going to have x1 and that is going to be 25 minus 5x2 minus 2x3 
we have this all divided by coefficient of x1 which is 8 we also have x2 to be equal to so that will be 20 minus 2x1 and this is minus so it becomes plus 2x3 all divided by coefficient of x2 which is 10 and then lastly we have x3 which is equal to 30 minus x1 minus 3x2 all divided by coefficient of x3 which is 6 remember that the values or the x values on the right hand side are x i of k minus 1 values so here we are going to have k minus 1 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 and then lastly k minus 1 and the values on the left hand side are x i of k values so we have k k and then k so now at this point we can perform the first iteration so for the first iteration for the first iteration we have x1 of 1 x1 of 1 because k is 1 so that is the first iteration so k is 1 so x1 of 1 that is simply 25 minus 5 times now here we have 5 times x2 of k minus 1 now since k is 1 then it means that we are going to have 1 minus 1 which is 0 and the xi of 0 values are the values that we have here so this is 25 minus 5 times x2 of 0 x2 of 0 is 0 And then minus 2 times x3 of 0 that is also 0 we have this all divided by 8 now this will be equal to this goes to 0 this also goes to 0 so we are left with 25 over 8 and that is equal to 3.125 we are supposed to leave our answer to six significant figures so this becomes we add additional two zeros so this is the value of x1 of 1 then we move on to x2 of 1 that is also equal to from this we have 20 minus 2 times 0 plus 2 times 0 all divided by 10 and this becomes 20 over 10 and that is simply 2 point zero 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 so this is x2 of one and then we have x3 of one which is also equal to we have 30 minus zero minus three times zero all divided by six this is equal to 30 divided by six and that is equal to five point zero 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 so these are the values that we obtain at the end of the first iteration step so at the end of the first iteration step we have x of 1 to be equal to x1 of 1 x2 of 1 x3 of 1 to be equal to 3.125002.000000 and then 5.000000 these are the values we obtain after the first iteration step now let's move on to the second iteration step so for the second iteration step We are going to have this to be x1 of 2 so here k is equal to 2 
so if k is equal to 2 then on the right hand side we are going to have 2 minus 1 which is 1 and which are these values which are these values so from this same equation from the equations we have here we are going to have 25 minus 5 times so x2 x2 is 2 so we have 2 here now here we can choose to write 2.0000 or basically 2 okay so we have 2 here minus minus 2 times x3 x3 is 5 so we have 5 and we divide all by 8 so here we are going to have 25 minus 10 minus 10 5 times 2 is 10 2 times 5 is also 10 so that becomes minus 20 and then you basically have 5 over 8 now what is 5 over 8 5 over 8 is simply 0 0.625 0 0 0 and then we move on to x2 of 2 x2 of 2 we are going to have 20 minus 2 times x1 we have x1 to be 3.125 plus 2 times of x3 which is 5 and then we divide all of this by 10 now when you do so then you are going to obtain you are going to obtain 2.375 0, 0, 2 this would be the value for x2 of 2 and then for x3 of 2 we are going to have 30 minus x1 x1 here is going to be 3.125 minus 3 times x2 which is 2 and you divide all of this by 6 and that is also going to give 3.47917 3.47917 so these are the values of x1 x2 x3 of 2 so at the end of the second iteration step we have x of 2 to be equal to x1 of 2 x2 of 2 x3 of 2 to be equal to 0 0.625 Zero 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 two point three seven five zero zero and three point four seven nine one seven. So at the end of the second iteration step, this is the approximation to the exact solution.